и ака. Ево си. Благодаря. So, Mr. Agarwal, you are, uh, is this your first uh, interview? Yes, sir. And uh, you are appearing for the first time also? Uh, so, I'm, uh, like, I have appeared <laughs> twice on prelims, but I could not clear that. I see. So, my third attempt, but first interview. Good, good. So, you are a teacher? Yes, sir. What is IIPS? Sir, it's the name of the institute, Indian Institute of Professional Studies. Uh, so, it is actually a CA tuition center. So, I am teaching economics to CA foundation and okay. intermediate students. So basically, it's uh, for uh, students who are planning to Do become this. a chartered accountant. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Ramak. Hello, sir. <clears throat> the governor's role has become very controversial of late. I mean, probably it was always controversial, but in recent times, we find uh, there have been occasions when both are at loggerheads, the state government. Uh, what do you think is behind this? And what could we do to remedy the situation? Uh, so I think your first question, uh, the yeah. reason for the differences between the state government and the governor, yeah. so it's twofold. Uh, one is the appointment of the governor, which is a bit politicized recently. Yeah. And second is due to the lack of cooperative federalism. Uh, so the state which I come from, West Bengal, it is one of the prime examples of the situation which uh, we are talking about right now. Yeah. So, so, according to me, uh, the solutions can be, uh, which is mentioned in various reports, uh, like... First of all, the appointment of governor should be done by the central government with along with the recommendation of the chief minister and the state government. And so second is that uh, the person who is appointed as a governor should be the least politicized person or rather not have any link with the political arena. And third said, uh, just like we have the GST council, uh, we can have various uh, state and uh, centre meetings on various state subjects so as to remove the uh, differences between the state and the central government. You mentioned about cooperative federalism. You also mentioned about GST Council. Yes, sir. Which is perhaps one of the latest instruments for promoting cooperative federalism. But in spite of that, do you think uh, the concept of cooperative federalism is on the strain at the moment? Uh, so the entire concept is a process. Uh, it cannot be achieved any at any point of time. It is like uh, like from we are moving from competitive federalism to a uh, cooperative federalism uh, regime mm -hmm. but as we know because of democracy and because of federal uh, democracy which we follow differences between state and center will remain if there are two different political parties but the thing is that differences should not come as a as an impediment in the development of a state or the entire nation so, so just as talking about GST council, mm -hmm. there were various differences, but still the states and the center could come to a consensus. Uh, we have had, although the implementation was a bit delayed and uh, it needed to be refined, but still proper measures were taken on time whenever needed. So, so we are on the process. Okay. Now, prior to the <coughs> setting up of the GST council, there have been some such bodies to resolve interstate disputes and to promote national integrity, unity and integrity. Can you name those uh, institutions? Uh, so, uh, we have the, uh, the interstate river uh, authority, river basin authority for the yeah, interstate rivers. Uh, yeah. So, we have the interstate but councils, the, uh, uh, yes. then we have uh, the interstate council, council zonal, council. zonal councils. Yes. yes. And that is a body to promote uh, Communal harmony, national unity. Uh, so National Development Council. No, that is another. I am forgetting the body, sir. National that, Integration Council. Yes, NIC. Right. Now the budget. Let me ask a question. Uh, on social sector, primarily health and education. Are you aware of some important provisions? made in the budget in these two sectors and do you think these allocations have been adequate? Uh, so one of the key ingredients... Take one by one. Let's take, let's take health first. <coughs> health first. Yeah. Uh, so first, the prime thing was uh, the budgetary allocation towards Ayushman Bharat, 
Yeah. So that has not because the government had to follow the fiscal consolidation path. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the budget which was required to be allocated uh, to be increased, it could not have been done that much because it had to resort to various off balance sheet financing as well. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the the allocation was not huge and uh, not enough. Right. However, there have been attempts uh, wherein we are talking about uh, converting various district hospitals into colleges. We are yes. talking about privatization of various um, health centers. Uh, and so private sector participation, participation in, so hospitals. in hospitals. Uh, yeah, and a viability gap funding. Viability gap funding for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so should and, I shift to education? Yes. So on the education front, uh, the allocation has been one of the highest. It is around 1 lakh crores, 99,300 crores. Mm-hmm. It is uh, very huge as compared to the previous years. But again, uh, because we know that the gross enrollment ratio is on the rise mm. and the government is not adequately funded right now to meet that requirement for the higher education students, we are talking again about the private sector participation. Yes. But sir, according to me, that might lead to commercialization of education, which we are already um, seeing the impact in the uh, primary and secondary education sector. So uh, the some of the various uh, important factors like vocational training, and uh, the implementation of draft national education policy was not, uh, the roadmap was not given. But uh, since we know because of the constraints of the three, the fiscal deficit, the animal spirits and the demand uh, growth, we had to resort to this kind of budget allocation. Two, two higher educational institutions have been proposed under the budget. Uh, the form of university, national level universities. So I'm not able to recall those two right now. One is National Police University, the other one is National Forensic Sciences University. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, this term, urban noxals, is being talked about a lot these days. Who's talking about it and who is it directed against? Uh, so the context is regarding the protests which are going on regarding some of the government uh, policies and legislations. Yeah. Uh, but sir, like, uh, speaking from uh, from a point of view, this is something which is a beauty of democracy. Had this been in China, it would have been a very different scenario. Mm-hmm. But since we as Indians have always been looked upon as an inclusive society, we have the right to protest. And due to the the present government is representing the protesters as the urban Nazis because according to them, uh, they are focusing on dividing India on the religious lines. But sir, this is due to misinformation on the various. Uh, the Nazis have never advocated uh, division. Division on religious lines. Yes, sir, exactly. That is why they are referring to urban Nazis like, uh, to the various. So it's like, not a, it's not a fair branding. Sir, in my view, protests have to be allowed, but again, hooliganism cannot be promoted. Uh, like yesterday itself, the Supreme Court had uh, the Supreme Court had uh, uh, ruled that the protest should be allowed, but only in restricted areas and should not work as an impediment in the general uh, course of life. Mm-hmm. So we need to maintain a balance on both the fronts. Effort from both protesters and government needs to be taken. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ronald, this uh, role of the chartered accountants, you know, has been coming under increasing focus mm-hmm. the past few years. What has been the problem? Uh, so the the question mark came into the fraternity because of various scams. The latest, well, the, the most important one being the Satyam scam of two thousand nine, and then the latest ones we have the PNB scam. Uh, we have the PMC uh, bank problem. So, so because the various accounting framework is under the hand of the auditors, who are the CAs and the CA firms, the fraternity has been under question mark for integrity, and therefore to uh, lead to. Uh, to, to remove the conflict of interest, the uh, government has set up the NFRA, which is National Financial Reporting Authority, which will uh, look after the implementation of various accounting standards and auditing standards, and uh, whether the auditors and the CAs are following the due process of law and integrity or not. Do you think it is a fair uh, assessment of the situation that uh, the CAs are not doing their job honestly? <coughs> uh, so the entire fraternity is not... Uh, corrupt or not indulging in these activities Mm -hmm. because in every aspect of governance economy is a very important part and the CAs or accountants or auditors have a great role in that aspect. Uh, Even in the economic survey, the CEA talked about the invisible hand of market and trust. So we cannot generalize it to lead to a trust deficit. 
However, proper uh, regulation is required so that the, the integrity is imbibed both from outside as governance and both from inside from the chartered accountant fraternity. You come from uh, the state of West Bengal, huh? Yes, sir. Why is West Bengal uh, pitted against the Citizenship Amendment Act? Uh, so it's not just West Bengal, various other states are uh, against the act. So the prime reason is because of misinformation and how that act is being linked to the various other legislations like NRC and NPR. Uh, and so the, the main idea of protest is something which is not despite of education but because of education. The students are protesting because they are politically literate. Uh, the government is protesting because India being the most important secular nation in the world, we cannot uh, brand our citizenship laws on the basis of religions. So protest is a good thing, but we need to be, put a stop to it to remove the rampant destruction of public property and public life. And as a measure, the most important thing is to de-link CAA with the NRC and to clear the information deficit which is lacking in the... Oh, but the, the Chief Minister, you mean to say the Chief Minister of West Bengal is doing something wrong or something bad? Uh, she is no, against the CA, she is against the NRC, she is against the NPR. She is against all three of them. So when and she says over my dead body. So, there are political uh, impulses which are political in nature, but speaking of on the ground reality, when we are linking CAA, NRC and NPR, then it becomes anti... Uh, religion, anti-secularism. Mm. That is the main idea of protest. Mm. But again, uh, because of the upcoming elections and because of lack of cooperative federalism, which I mentioned, uh, these political uh, in so exchanges. So, you say it will die down after the elections are over? Uh, no, sir, it won't die down. Mm. But uh, the immediate step needs to be taken from the uh, party which is making the legislation. Mm. Uh, as I told, uh, we need to uh, clear the information deficit. For example, whenever a media, uh, whenever a media person is interviewing uh, any protester and that protester is misinformed, no attempt is done to clear that information. If a person is saying that CWA is anti-Muslim, there is no attempt by the media person to explain it's not. So that this uh, is what is needed to be done both from the government side and from the public side as, as a whole. What is the state of industrialization in, in West Bengal? <coughs> is it going up or coming down or have all the industries been completely finished in West Bengal? Uh, so, state of industrialization per se has been on the decline because so in the colonial era, in the British regime, because Calcutta was the capital, uh, so the, it was the hub of all the economic activities of India. But after the partition of Bengal and partition of India in 1947, the jute producing areas went to East Pakistan and we were just left with the jute producing mills. And jute uh, industries was the prime source of uh, income for the state at that time. So that declined. After that, uh, the, we were, the West Bengal uh, was under the chains of the left government, which definitely led to various land reforms. <laughs> but on the other hand, there was again a trust deficit on the private sector part. <coughs> Even the Tatas had to recede. So the private sector and the capitalist classes actually refraining from entering Bengal. Uh, we also have some of the... Uh, like some of the schemes like Bengal leads summit, but that trust deficit is still staying in the economy. Now, why is it that not many uh, students from West Bengal sit for the IAS or maybe get selected for the IAS? Is there any particular reason or is it, is it, a, is it a correct assessment? Uh, sir, it is a correct assessment. Very few people are actually appearing for it. Mm. Uh, the reason being West Bengal, the ethnic and the ethnic class is either Bengalis or Marwadis or, and, and various other, other classes are there. The most of the Marwadis families are focused upon either business or a job in the commercial sector. The engineers, they go to different parts of India for tuition and for jobs and the Bengali community is uh, basically inclined either towards WBPSC or towards a uh, job service. So that is one of the reason. Thank you. Mm, Mr. Agarwal, can you explain to me about uh, the India's nuclear doctrine? So, India's nuclear doctrine is based upon no first use policy, uh, which means that we will not be using it uh, at the first instance, but if we are attacked by any particular country and it impacts us uh, to a very uh, large, in, uh, large limit, then we will uh, lead 
I'm not getting, I'm not able to recall the exact word, but we will do our level best uh, to proliferate, uh, to reply to that power. And But recently, there have been uh, <coughs> statements that we might be tweaking with the no first use doctrine, but there is no political, no uh, uh, official statement to that aspect. Okay, what is India's Act East policy? Can you explain, please? So, Act East policy is an extension of the Look East policy. Uh, because we are talking of the Asian century right now, and uh, the Tiger Club countries are to the Southeast Asian uh, nations, <laughs> therefore, Act East policy is actually getting more involved into the ASEAN membership and dealing both in trade and cultural ties so as to uh, expand our soft power and trading power both simultaneously. Uh, do you think this time India will be able to meet its disinvestment target? Uh, sir, just today there was an article by the chief economist advisor. Uh, uh, he said that all the other uh, aspects of the budget are to the mark and can be achieved. But this investment target is, is a bit uh, very ambitious because the 1.05 lakh crore rupees target of the past year could not be met. Uh, so we are not very sure whether 2.1 lakh crore will be met or not, but half of that will definitely be achieved in the coming six months. And uh, there have been attempts like the LIC, there was mention of LIC, there was a uh, mention of HPCL, uh, the BPCL disinvestment. So sir, so it might be achieved if the economy <coughs> revives to a certain extent and if that, if uh, the animal spirits among the private sector leads to a virtuous cycle. Do you think... Uh China has handled the coronavirus issue initially. Uh, it's it has handled the issue initially. Yes, or even later. Okay, uh, so as compared to the SARS, that is a severely acute uh, respiratory syndrome <laughs> of 2003, uh, Chinese were really fast in in uh, the recent uh, in this novel coronavirus issue. But uh, the Tencent report is saying that there have been a lot more deaths than what is the official estimate. And so there ha I am not very sure whether it's official or not, but uh, there have been views that uh, the entire Wuhan city has been uh, locked and people are saying that they, the, those who are infected by the virus might be shooted. And since it is not a democracy, we will not be able to know about it. Uh, the, so just an example, uh, there was a famine in 1959 to 60 and around 30 million people were uh, uh, actually deceased but the world did not get to know about it. So we do not know the actual on the ground situation because of lack of uh, free media. But the attempts have been great because they have uh, built around uh, 10,000 hospital beds in just 10 days. Uh, so the attempts have been and there. You are partly true, but uh, initially China did for a month, we report it. Initially they did mishandle it in the beginning, but uh, later on they are going over a lot of efforts because they understood the severity of Hospitals at second time, they are quarantined 60 million people on their bikes. So it's a stupendous effort. Yes, sir. Uh, so tell me about China's Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, sir, Belt and Road Initiative is, a, is called to be the 21st century Silk Road. So it has two elements uh, one is the road initiative, and other is a belt initiative. The road initiative is focused on the, uh, the connecting the various ports so as to connect China with the Atla uh, Chinese uh, with the Atlantic Ocean and the uh, Belt Initiative uh, connects the land borders from up to the Mongolia to China, up to uh, Russia from China. Uh, but this might be a threat to India because there, have, there are two reasons for that. Uh, one is, uh, it is a question on the territorial integrity of China-Pakistan economic corridor passing through the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. And second, a lack of transparency and a threat of debt traps uh, occurring into the um, nations which are involved in Belt and Road Initiative. Good. Do you think Brexit is good for India or bad for India? Sir, we are not even sure whether it's good for Britain or not. Because no, that I have not asked. I am telling you the answer. Uh, because sir, it will only be uh, materializing after we get to know how Britain reacts to the situation. If it is a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit, and what uh, agreements will Britain enter into with India and other uh, nations. It is diplomacy and trade both. But to a certain extent, uh, 
because of the ongoing US China trade war and Brexit India should capitalize the opportunity and try and increase its exports but we are lagging behind on that extent right now no i don't think we are lagging behind i think we are on the track back to uk as a process we have all indications that they would like to continue the trade deal with us because we are uh, one of the biggest nations uh, going uh, okay the last question i uh, ask is uh, about the uh, you know this uh, whole issue of corona virus uh, is india prepared for it exactly uh so because health is a state subject there was the outbreak of zika virus which kerala took care of very efficiently and even recently when three cases were uh, detected in kerala uh, very effective measures were taken so kerala is fine what about so other states i'm talking about for example west bengal uh, so we are doing level best but because of the brain drain and because of some of the uh, delays in the r&d development it might hamper us to an extent because of the porous borders it 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 can hamper us but we are on the path to preparedness so we are on the path but we don't have a good health system we don't acute hospital <coughs> personnel so we have to really you know be alert on the disease and when it can come back we have to support us thank you thank you sir so agawa you have mentioned uh, in your daf about uh, essay writing in which you were placed third yes, by the unic unic uh, united nations information center information center okay what was what was the essay on so it was the essay on safalta dwara vinamrata aani chahiye which means with success humility should, should come to the person you written this in hindi or uh, sir i wrote in hindi mm-hmm. okay good now you also uh, write poems in hindi and english yes sir what kind of poems are you fond of writing so i write in free style and they can be rhyming and they may not, may not be rhyming and i what not, subjects uh, or range of subjects or uh, so the, it's basically not not on personal subjects but it might be on certain objects or might be on certain social issues or i have written a poem on uh, on india so like there are various, various uh, topics okay right now uh, you know uh, the this issue of, na- of naxalism it started from naxal bari and it really spread like a corona virus and the virus may be uh, you know dissipate after a couple of days or months this thing is not and it has spread to so many states what is the basic ideology of the left wing extremist group which is sustaining it uh, i said the basic ideology rests in the communist mindset which speaks of inclusive growth but it was a misdirected uh, inclusive growth because the land reforms which were taken after independence they were misdirected uh, we uh, we focus also what is the uh, forget the cause i am asking you is there what is the ideology which the naxals preach they are against everything which the government does to remedy uh, the issues because okay. for example there are two people in a particular group and there are 10 people in the community they do not want those 10 people to to be pro government and so that they are cutting the entire each and every step which government tries to reach to them that is the basic ideology to spread left wing extremism but sir as we, uh, in the latest report by the home minister uh, the left wing extremism districts have been on the decline and uh, we have reached a very high peak in combating that but under unless that is totally eradicated we cannot be rest assured what is that. the what is the objective of these groups do they want to seize political power or what do they want to do so the primary objective was land reforms and uh, community welfare but because they of it they don't speak of uh, land reforms and uh, community welfare so the, it was the primary objective yeah. when it started now it is nothing but the destruction of government property yes, but, but now it has led yeah. to a very politicization of the entire issue they are not focusing on seizing government power political power but they are focusing on each and everything which is against the government to get more uh, uh, better they have, a, they have a very fully fledged plga people's liberation guerrilla army is what they call themselves yes sir and the fact that they are able to take on the paramilitary forces and inflict uh, 
uh, you know, uh, casualties on them, every now and then, it shows that they are very well trained. The other day, yesterday, Chhattisgarh again, there was something, a few days back to somewhere else. Last year in Gatcharoli, uh, they killed 14, 15 years <coughs> So it's a continuous thing. But why is it that we are not able to control it? Is there any particular reason for that? So the first reason is they are trained in guerrilla warfare, which our soldiers are also now getting trained in, but we are not able to match that uh, 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 that speciality in that terrain. Okay. Second is because of the, develop, uh, the uh, delivery deficit of the government. There have been various uh, uh, schemes like the outreach program and uh, various uh, education and health schemes. But because of lack of proper implementation, the people are not getting to know about this, the step which government is taking. Now take and the case to West Bengal itself. Till a few years back, you had a number of districts which were uh, impacted, right? Yes, sir. And Cobra battalions had to be posted there. But today, thankfully, at least uh, this problem is uh, sorted out. Sorted out in West Bengal. In West Bengal. Yes, sir. So is it because of developmental activities or political reasons? Sir, it's a combination of both. Both. Things. Just okay. one thing cannot handle the yeah, entire that's issue. That's <laughs> okay. Now let me ask you something else. You heard of the International Solar Alliance. Yes, sir. What is this? Uh, sir, this was pioneered by our Prime Minister along with the French counterpart. Right. Uh, this uh, encompasses uh, a community of all those countries which are lying in the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn region uh, so as to promote the solar energy use in day-to-day -day activities and uh, to do a bit in achieving the Paris. Uh, do they have, uh, where is the headquarters of this ISA? Sir, we have in uh, Guru Gram in India. In Guru Gram. Nice. Okay. Now, uh, in 2018, uh, when this was launched, uh, we had set certain targets for solar energy and for wind power. Right? Yes. Sir. What are those targets? Um, so it was 175 gigawatt uh, for the solar. Uh, it was 175 total gigawatt yes. to be achieved by 2022. Out of that, uh, 100 gigawatt was to be achieved uh, through solar energy. Uh, 50 gigawatt through wind energy. 60. 60. 60, 60. gigawatt to wind through wind energy. Yeah. 10 through uh, hydric power and 5 through biomass, if yeah, I am not mistaken. Right. Okay, good. You know, in order to boost uh, regional connectivity, a, a program called Ulan was launched. What is this support program? Sir, it's the, it's the full form is Pune Desh Ka Aam Nagrik. Mm. Uh, the attempt was to connect the two tier and three tier cities uh, and develop airports so that air connectivity is achieved. Mm -hmm. And that has to a certain extent achieved also because uh, it is expected that India will be the second uh, most, um, uh, second highest contributor to the airline industry of the world. Uh, we have also launched the International Uran, which focuses on the. Uh, is, there, is there any reference to this Uran program <coughs> in uh, our budget? So I cannot read. There was something, but I'm yeah. not able to recall. Yeah, right basically, uh, they, they say that they will build 100 uh, more airports in the next so many years. Right? Now, in your state, have there been, uh, has any, have the, under this program, has there been any connectivity? No, sir. There are just two uh, two uh, working airports in West Bengal. One mm -hmm. is Calcutta and the other is the Bagdogra Airport. Bagdogra. And uh, again, that is one of the main reasons is lack of cooperative interest. Yeah, cooperative. Right. Okay. Now, uh, have you heard of this Kartarpur corridor? Yes, sir. What is this? Uh, so this is a goodwill gesture on both the parts of India and Pakistan, uh, so as to connect the uh, Kartarpur Sahib uh, uh, Gurudwara in pa on the Pakistan side, right. so that the Sikhs from India can visit through yeah. that corridor. Correct. Now, when this was being uh, was being constructed and it was due to open, the Chief Minister, Punjab Chief Minister and raise concerns that it would give a boost to fill up to Sikh militancy. How is that? Uh, sir, uh, that, it was a reference to the Khalistan movement uh, because uh, that was to a certain extent funded and instigated by the enemy counterpart like Pakistan and the adjoining mm -hmm. militant group. Well, it's not that. See, the point is that he had expressed concern that every time that Sikh Jathas go into uh, either now to the Kartarpur Sahib Gurdwara or to Nankana Sahib, where we have been going regularly every year. Attempts are made by the ISI to recruit some of these fellows, see, to find malcontents amongst them and then try to 
win them over. And how do they do that? Because most of the Sikh militants, majority of them, who ran away from India, like the Babar Khalsa, Khalistan Commando Force, they are all staying in Pakistan. And therefore, there is they are under pressure from the Pakistani authorities that we are giving you free uh, stay and everything. You do something for us. So that is the right. Okay, thank you. So now we thank come, you, we end your interview. I'll give you a bit of a feedback. Now, uh, normally what happens is that in these kind of interviews, you will either get uh, questions from your dad or from general, uh, you know, current affairs. Now, so far as your dad is concerned, since your optional subject is commerce, you were asked many questions related to, uh, to charter accountants. You can expect many more questions. Right? You belong to West Bengal, so once again, you know, the West Bengal will certainly be there, you know, and so many of these issues are asked, uh, cooperative federalism and all, and you know, other financial issues like, you know, what is the GDP of the state, uh, what is the HDI, uh, Can you know yeah, yeah, why not, and uh, the equations uh, between the state government and the central government. <laughs> Because they've always been difficult. Because, you know, even when Mr. Uh, former Prime Minister was there, that time also when he was going to Bangladesh, uh, the chief, your chief minister refused to go. Yes. So it's not that it's an animosity with this government. That that it's is always dish. been there because uh, for whatever reasons. The point is that on the uh, then you know apart from West Bengal, then you know essay writing. Uh, since the, you have won a prize in this, just be ready to, in case you are asked, you know, what was the gist of your uh, your essay. Then poems in Hindi and English. So there also, you know, you will be asked, like, can you recite a few lines? So be, be, be ready with that. Yes. And since you are teaching, and basically economics is a subject, so you can expect questions on the budget, certainly, you know, and the, generally the economic uh, situation in the country. Coming to the uh, current events, you read, uh, you, are you reading any particular newspaper? Oh, so I'm reading Indian Express yeah. and Times of India. Yeah, that's very good. Do that very, very religiously. And uh, take out uh, matters of interest from there. You know, international affairs, uh, domestic things are happening every day. You know, Supreme Court is uh, giving judgments on so many things. What are its implications? Foreign visits uh, are taking place and are scheduled to take place. Mr. Trump is going to be coming here. Yes. You know, there's a whole lot of, uh, the area is very wide. So, the more you read, the better prepared you are for the, for the interview. And you have a lot of time. You are, you are, you are still uh, 20th, 20th of March. March. Yeah. So, in case you are, are you here based in uh, Delhi? No, sir. From Calcutta. You've come from Calcutta. Okay. Then if, if you have the time, then, uh, you know, after a couple of days, so 10, 10, 15 days, you can make another trip then we can brief you on how you have progressed, right? Okay, sir. Otherwise, you are doing well. You will be given a CD of this interview. Okay. So, go through that. You will see all the questions which you are asked and you judge for yourself, you know, where you were, uh, uh, you were good and where you were a bit hesitant or where some information is lacking. Okay. Otherwise, I think you are doing very well. Anything which you like to add? You, uh, you are aware of most of the questions. You could reply them. But I think you are a bit expensive. Okay. Be to the point. Okay. Otherwise, you know, someone might feel that you are, you know, beating around the bush. No, and you see, the point is, it's a limited time factor. Yes. So the time is limited. So if you are asked a particular question, don't go into the background. Answer the question. If the if the member asks you more in detail, then you do. Then right. To the point. To the point. Should be to the point. Anything you'd like to add? All the best. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Just a question. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes, sir. It was satisfactory. Like yes. yes, very good. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Okay. Everything you, is very good. But point is that, you know, the more data you have, the better you better answer. Yeah, better answer. And yeah. try to be slightly more diplomatic in the reply, especially regarding political sensitive Yeah. Not be blunt about it. Okay. And on the CA and RC, you see, the matter is subjudice. Okay. And you are aspiring for the highest civil services. So, if an act of parliament, how can you say that uh, the, the states are opposing it? It's a, it's a law. It's a law of the land. Okay. So, don't give, uh, you uh, on this particular issue, where the matter is subjudice, you say, sir, we'll have to wait for the Supreme Court to decide on this. Okay. Okay. You can give the bare facts. 
but don't we ask you what are the opposing viewpoints then you can the actual right? position without committing yourself don't commit one way or the other on any contentious issue <coughs> uh, don't commit right give the factual position that is the best way to handle it okay thank you so much right. thank, thank you the best thank you sir thank you sir thank you, thank you sir. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.